that's a brand new map. If you look at the old Hereford now that's up on the screen, and look at the new Hereford, we've completely redone it from the ground up. Completely redone it, so it's way different than what we've introduced last season with the map buff. This is a new map, base, bottom line. I mean, it's a little familiar, but it's, it's really new. Um, players that know Siege and know the game will recognize it. They'll recognize the thematics, the Spitfires, the control tower, and the, and the shooting range, but the inside is, you know, easy for the spawn point. You've still got control tower, the shooting range, and the Spitfire courtyard. So that will feel very familiar to anyone that's played Hereford, and hopefully the entire community has. So nothing's really changed. The approaches have changed, um, because obviously the outside's completely changed, the inside's changed. The approaches have changed uh, a little bit, but they're very pretty well sheltered and they're very good approach lines for so in, ter in terms of those approaches uh you, you know a lot of those elements and tractor on the third floor how you got a tractor on the third floor i is beyond me but you know uh, break down the strategy for this uh ammo and tractor is actually um one of the bomb sites that we had she had the most trouble with it wasn't very viable and we had to rework it a few times it's a very open space mm. with not too much cover so it does make it quite tricky to actually go through and defend that defense point it's actually really fun to design something like that and there's a few little ticks and um tips and tricks you can actually use as an attacker remember there is a drone vent up on the roof so if you need to drone that bomb site or if you need to drone any bomb site you can go top down or bottom up but what makes this so fun is there's so many avenues for the attackers to come at you from the stairs or from the balcony. So you can faint out the um, defenders quite easily. Yeah, from the stairs or even the roof, there, I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of external rotations on this map I, I think for this bomb site. I think you're going to find a lot of people, if they need to rotate, they'll go up on the roof and come down and repel on the yeah. other side for sure. And now that balcony is really important as well. Talk to us a little bit about, about that balcony. Why is that there? The balcony is there to allow um, another option for the attackers to actually come in but to also have another avenue for defense because if you've only got two sets of stairs and a couple of windows it's not really enough for you know fun gameplay but you throw that balcony into the mix. Uh, let's take a look at these bomb sites here tell us a little bit about the strategy behind defending and attacking the second floor. Kids room master bedroom is a really good area to go through and play. It's a, it's a very viable bomb site. It's an awful lot of fun. You see in the kids' bedroom, there's the, um, the bunk beds and there's the bomb right on the side, and it's really fun to try and defend the bomb, like if you've got someone staying back and trying to hold the area. And it's there's a lot of options to actually um, extend your defense on this floor, for sure. Yeah, and you, you mentioned that verticality. Yes. And that verticality comes in play on the second floor really, really importantly because you have those hatches, you have those line of sight floors on both sides, yeah. on, the, on the floors and the ceilings. So how are p players are going to be defending against that verticality on this floor? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky one. I haven't quite figured it out myself yet, but <laughs> <laughs> you'll you generally find people just, there are areas that aren't actually destructible floor and you'll find a lot of people will be rotating through about the strategies that you'll see on kitchen dining room and what has changed on the first floor jeremy okay what's changed on the first floor is there was that there was that massive choke that um, massive hallway <laughs> where you have the choke point at the entrance and the choke point at the stairs and chaos in the middle uh so is that still there no that's not there anymore okay. we've, we've, we've 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 the entire floor plan for the entire map has changed but you know Obviously, you don't want choke points when you're designing a map, so we've taken as many of the choke points, you know, as, as you can actually out of the map. So the corridor's not straight. You've still got quite good line of sight. You know, playing go. with a mirror wall is actually um, really quite fun. Well, actually, on all the bomb sites, it's really fun. But I, I find that playing um, a mirror on this site is really nice. And Five because you can destruct... Go. And fermentation room. Uh, now, as a UK man yourself, I, I am very pleased to see that there's a brewery in the basement of Hereford. <laughs> well, it, it's, the it's only S fitting. <laughs> it's the SAS. I'm sure the SAS drink a fair amount of beer. Um, it's a great thematic, you know, w when it's cold and rainy outside, you want to drink some beer, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, basement's really fun. Um, there's a couple of big objects for the fermentation tanks that are bulletproof, so you've got a long line where you can actually shoot through and go back and forth, which is really nice. And uh, one of the key things is we're taking a look at the, the, uh, tunnel. the tunnel right now, which is a new addition. Why did you add this tunnel? What is so key about this? 
you, if you put a basement in the ground and, you, and you've only got two sets of stairs, it's not fun because you know exactly where the attackers are going to come from. They're going to come from the stairs. So you, you can't do that mm. because it won't be fun and then we'll have the same problem again with the original Hereford, which is they're only going to play the one viable bomb site because it's easy to defend. Right. You add the tunnel on the outside and then you add the garage, which is off on the side. Play above all else. She's resolute. She's sharp witted and she's and that was a long process but we think we found something interesting so you took uh, like what you like the most from montaigne and what you liked the most from blitz and sort of married them together in, in clash a little bit yeah kind of that and at the same time is like you have to both take what you like from the shield and also think it's a defense shield it doesn't have to push the side she does she just has to stand there and prevent them from pushing so we focused the shield mostly on the defensive aspect that was super key on the team play aspect but remove a lot of elements of lethality. Amelia, this is our first defense operator with a shield. Why are we introducing this now to the game? Well, we definitely want to explore new areas of gameplay in every season, like as much as we can, and uh, expand on things that already exist, but also bring some new things, new fun things to play around. Uh, Clash in our situation was mostly we need someone who can bring a new way to play as a team, and definitely since she is very low lethality, she really needs a teammate to do the job with her. She needs to communicate a lot, and that's what we like about Clash. So you you would describe her more as if so in the same way that uh, like Blitz and Montaigne have their prim primary as like. Uh, as their shield. Yes, yes, but they have their sidearm with the shield. Right. She cannot. She can't. But if she plays the shield in a bag, she can access her sidearms, which are both great weapons. We have a handgun and the first burst fire weapon of the game, two bullets. Both of them come equipped with uh, embed sights and really good sight, by the way. They're not very, they're not, they will never be as powerful right. as an SMG, but they can do the job if you're like the last survivor or if, if the enemy team realizing that you're not the threat, look away. Yeah. That is your turn to shine. In a pinch, when you really need to just get a kill, she, uh, you know, I think shields are OP. I think they are unbalanced. So how have you balanced uh, Clash? Well, she has, like, again, we had a learning in these two and a half years of having Blitz running around and all. And now we think that we found some ways to have Clash being very interesting to play, but also not as frustrating to play against. And uh, most of those counter comes from that. She cannot melee you. She cannot melee you at short range. That's not possible for us. So, but you can. You will trigger this semi guard break that will move the shield to the side and allow you to shoot her legs. However, that means you need to get to close range. To do that, you can use Thatcher. Mm. Because Thatcher's EMP will disable the shield and allow you to bypass the taser part of the shield. Yeah, and we also saw Sophia, and we we, we also saw Capital yes. as counters. Who do you think is the most uh, the, the strongest counter against Clash? Capital is definitely the strongest. Yeah. She's slow, she has a shield on top of that, and the Firebolt, if you place it right, you will kill Clash very fast. Capital is definitely very strong against Clash, but Thatcher and Zofia can do a pretty good job. Yeah, absolutely. So, that is a look at Clash. Uh, coming your way to the test server very shortly, but let's also take a look at her BDUs that are coming uh, with Pass. Uh, this is a head-to-toe customization, and they look really cool. They're sort of Grim Sky themed and Grim Sky, sty, sky colored, uh, so it's, it's super cool. Eric is, uh, is an enigma within Siege, <laughs> and within the Team Rainbow is, uh, is from Thermite and Banner, mm. and that was a big challenge, and uh, we came up with this idea that allows Maverick to do a very different role than those two. Yeah. So why, as a designer, as a game designer on Rainbow Six Siege, was it important for you guys to introduce an, a third hard region? Why is that important? There is multiple aspects seen in the gameplay, and it's very true, is it stands between Harbreacher and Disabler. You have Twitch, Thatcher, Thermite, and Banner. This question, one of them for competitive play is we introduced Pick and Ban recently, right. and despite the fact that they can ban both Harbreacher, it rarely happens, to make sure that we have three options. That's the one thing. Second thing, even more important to us, is the metal breaching role is a very key role in Siege, and people that play that role have limited options, right. just two. And we needed a third one to give them a new aspect of how to approach a bomb site. And third on bomb site, Maverick would be extremely relevant contrary to the other two, or in combination with the other two. His his gadget is so much different from them. Where uh, Hibana and and Thermite have this really binary: it's either open or close. 
Maverick has a lot of creativity. What are some of the strategies that you have seen in your play sessions? Well, uh, in practice, we introduced Maverick as a Harbreacher. That was the key. But the rifle, those two very good weapons, and the sound design of those weapons are amazing. It's three armor, well, three speed, one armor, so very fast. And he has a handgun with that. But the most important and interesting thing about Maverick and his loadout, secondary gadgets. Secondary gadgets. Tell us a little bit about his secondary gadgets. What are they? So the secondary gadgets are very important for him. He has two, Claymore and Smoke. This is two very different approach to Maverick. The Smoke is, uh, since he's a very potent hard breacher, since he cannot really be countered by Mutant Bandit, he needs drawback. And the drawback is it takes time, a lot of time. I mean, we see Mira as like a, almost yeah. a 100% pick rate or ban rate as well. Yeah. Those, those bottom holes at the bottom of the of the wall are also very key. You can uh, have a drone go there, yeah. so Twitch drone, for example, and deal with the mirror. But this is where the second gadget comes into play. You right. can place the Claymore mine there and create some insanely sneaky traps. Insanely sneaky traps. And now let's move on to his counters. How do you stop him? Well, there is again, the, since he's somewhere between Disabler and Metal Breacher, he's not in the same counter loop as Ibana and Thermite. Oh, this guy, uh, once again, these are head to toe. Uh, BDU's customization items that will be day one once the uh, Grim Sky launches and you can get them with the year three season pass. The weapon site misalignment. Well, without going into too many details here, it's, uh, it's a fix we've been working on for a very, very long time. <laughs> we're very happy that it goes into the game now. Uh, basically, oftentimes when you shoot with a weapon, the middle of your screen and the scope would not be aligned, and you sometimes you would feel like I shot the head, but no, the scope was on the head, but not the middle of the screen, so the bullet missed. Now it's no longer the case. Every single moment in the in the rate of fire of your weapon, the center of the screen is aligned with the fucking weapon. <laughs> <laughs> the people are happy. The, the people what? are happy, Emilian. The people have spoken. <laughs> Yeah, finally. I'm very, very happy about that. Yeah. Uh, so bottom line, though, the bullet, you run away to the bathroom or are getting another drink or, or whatever. I always see that on stream. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this change where it will automatically select a random operator once you, uh, if you get. Everyone knows and loves consulate, right? Oh, we lo all love it. <laughs> Well, we've gone through and we've reworked consulate. You'll see the before and afters here. We've gone through, redone the art. We've gone through, added another bomb site to the map, and we've gone through and looked at the most important thing, which was the early kills and the spawn picks, and it looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, the crowd is reacting right now. What do you think? Why do you, why do you think it was really important to do these tweaks, these map ups? Oh, they really do like the map. They do um, like it. <laughs> the, the importance of doing it was adding, the main thing was adding uh, a fourth bomb. So it makes... But, but use this. Well, that's also a thing we had in mind a very long time ago. When we released Ibana, it felt not right that Hatch was binary, that Hatch would be destroyed or not, and that's it. So what we wanted to do for a while, and that now Maverick allows us to do, is this semi-destruction. That means that if you want to destroy a hatch with thermite, no problem. Always yeah. work. Thermite will always yeah. blow the hatch, but Habana, you'll need uh, six. six pellets. Exactly. You need your six pellets. It doesn't sound like a big difference, but if a roamer is around and gets a few shots on your pellets, then you need to use another of your resources to get the hatch done. Yeah, or you can have Maverick come by and finish the job. Exactly. Right? Maverick can come by if his job. If it does, if it does deals enough damage to the hatch, it will be destroyed also. So he can deal with hatch as well. But he can also make those sneaky holes and kill people below. Now we've had uh, we've outlined a lot of these features on our blog rainbow6.com. We also have a ton more coming with Grim Sky, including Grim Sky. And here you're taking a look at Frost Elite. Of course, the Elite skins are premium skins that are, that are available with a full head-to-toe read. You'll be able to play it. You'll be able to play Clash, Maverick, the new map rework for Hereford. You'll be able to play the new buff for Consulate.